All right, hotkeys take two. <coughs> My desk too messy. What's up, filmmakers? Today we're talking keyboard shortcuts, or hotkeys, that can speed up your workflow, save you from digging through menus, and save you time. While it's a little difficult in the beginning to adopt hotkeys into your normal editing, in the long run, they're an absolute game changer. And the truth is many programs like Premiere Pro are built around the idea that most users, professional users, will rely primarily on the hotkeys. Some functions might not even be available outside of these shortcuts. What I'm going to show you today is merely the tip of the iceberg, the beginning of your long, epic journey. These are the fundamentals, a good starting place to dip your toes into the proverbial keyboard. Oh, and because I'm on a PC, I'm gonna say control key a lot, but for you Mac users out there, just sub out command key each time and you'll generally be good to go. So put down that mouse and don your learning caps. Here's my curated list of the top 13 keyboard shortcuts I use every single day. Intro. Number one, the playback controls. Moving around your timeline is crucial to controlling the edit, and it's the most common thing you'll end up doing inside of your program. Sure, you can use the spacebar and the arrow keys, but those are so... So uncivilized. The truth is that there's a much faster and more efficient way to move about the timeline. That's why it's essential to know J, K, and L. L plays the timeline forward, uh, similar to spacebar, but if you double click L, you'll play forward at double speed and triple click, triple speed, all the way up to 5x speed. Once you start changing the playback speed, you'll never go back. Speaking of going back, J is the same as L, but in reverse, same rules apply. Click J once and it'll play back in reverse at normal speed. Twice, and it'll double, and so on. And K is the pause button. No matter what speed you're playing back at, K will stop the playhead dead in its tracks. So yeah, three keys instead of one for playback, it doesn't sound more efficient, but trust me, there's no faster way to travel through your timeline. In fact, JK and L are so useful, they're universal. Final Cut, Avid, Sony Vegas, DaVinci Resolve, they all default to those three keys for playback. It's the central dogma of the edit. So go ahead, give them a spin. Number two, the slice tool. This one's easy because once you've learned K for playback, you'll find yourself using it for the slice tool. Okay, sure, you can go to the toolbar, you can click on the razor blade, find the spot you wanna cut, and then click the mouse to cut it, but if your snapping is turned on, it might not be the spot you wanted, and if your timeline is scaled out a lot, it might be off by just a few frames. It's definitely not my favorite, and to be honest, I rarely use the razor blade tool. Instead, my go-to is Control K. The way it works is it will apply the cut anywhere where the playhead is. So place the playhead where you want it, hit Control K, and voila, a clean cut. Now you can keep moving without even switching tools. And sometimes you have a bunch of layers of footage, not all connected. Well, Control K will apply to whichever clip is highlighted or whichever clips are in your active track on your timeline. But let's say you just wanna cut everything at a single point, no matter how many layers you have. It would be a real shame to have to select each clip one by one and cut them all. Luckily, if you hit Shift Control K, it'll do just that, a clean slice, all the way down right at the playhead. And let me tell you, if you're new to the world of hotkeys, shift shows up a lot as the modifier key. So it's a good one to keep handy and experiment with. Number three, ripple delete. When I learned this shortcut, it changed my life. This might be the single largest time saver you'll come across in this video. Okay, so here's the scenario. There's a section of clip that you want cut out. Let's say a subject says, um, or you wanna trim off the beginning or the ending of a clip and keep that edit tight. The bad way to do it is cut it, possibly on both ends, select the offending section of the clip and delete that. Then drag everything down to fill the empty space left behind. Terrible, right? Seconds of your life gone that you can never get back. Well, what if you could do that whole process in one step? Cut, delete, and shift things over. Well, let me introduce you to the letters Q and W on your keyboard. Q will delete everything upstream on the timeline until it hits a cut point or a clip boundary. So you set the playhead where you want your clip to start, hit Q and voila. Now the correct endpoint is set at the beginning of your timeline. W works the same way, but in reverse. So you've decided on the end of a clip, say when you want to cut away from the subject back to the interviewer, place a playhead and bam, cut, delete and shift it all in one go. In my experience, Q and W are early timeline tools. When you're building out your rough cut, they work best when you have one layer of footage, and that's because they work a lot like our old friend Shift Control K. That's right, they cut everything in the timeline at the playhead point and move it back, or at least 
they pay attention to the things that are active or highlighted tracks in your timeline. So they might not stop at the cut point that you expect them to. Basically, when you have more than one layer of footage or audio in your timeline, Q&W can tend to wreak havoc and are best avoided. It also takes a bit of brain power to predict exactly what they're going to do with more than one clip, so viewers be warned. And to you Final Cut 10 users out there in your fancy magnetic timelines, you can shut it. Number four, non-destructive ripple edit tool. Speaking of ripple edit, there's another tool I use all the time that's more valuable when you have a bunch of layers, but you can honestly use this at any point. It's the ripple edit tool or keyboard shortcut B. Like some other tools I'll talk about today, there's actually no way to use this one without your mouse, as far as I know. So that's a bummer. All you do is hit B, hover over the ends of a clip or a cut point, and you'll see your little brackets turn yellow. That's how you know you're in the ripple edit tool. Now, click and drag to either reduce or extend the selected clip and either move everything else out of the way to make space or collapse everything in real time. Number five, the nudge clip tool. Clicking and dragging a clip around by hand feels like an intuitive way to align things. And it is for big picture stuff, placing it, getting it roughly where you want it to be. But I know I used to personally suffer a constant frustration as I tried to eyeball one or two frame moves with the mouse. I couldn't tell if snapping was helping or making it worse. That's why I now use control plus arrow key left and right. And shift control arrow key left and right. When you have a clip selected in the timeline while holding down control, the arrow keys will move the clip up or downstream exactly one frame at a time. And if you hold down shift and control, it'll move the clip five frames at a time in either direction. That's perfect for nailing that alignment the first time. Number six, parenting clips. By default, when you drag a new clip into the timeline, it has the audio track and the video track and they're sort of stuck together, assuming the setting is still toggled on in your preferences. When you slice them, it cuts them both. When you move them, they both move together. Most of the time, this is really useful because you don't want the audio to fall out of sync with your video. But sometimes you wish you could separate them. That's where control L comes in. With your target clip highlighted, control L will separate the video and the audio tracks so they can be moved independently. Control L will also reconnect them to each other. This is awesome when you have a separate audio and a video source. So once you've synced them and aligned them all in your timeline, you can select the video and audio portions, hit Control L, and they'll operate like a normal single attached clip. You don't have to worry about things accidentally falling out of sync while you work with them. And the absolute coolest thing about Control L is you can use it with more than one video or audio clip. Try it, select a bunch of clips and make sure they aren't already connected to anything else. Hit Control L and there you go. Now you have one super clip. <laughs> Number seven, select all. Even with all the above shortcuts to limit the amount of manual click and drag motion you have to do, there does come a time where you need to move a bunch of clips all at once. Let's say everything downstream from your playhead. I used to zoom all the way out, click and drag and try to select everything in the timeline move it and then see if that was enough. It was messy, inexact, and I often miss something which I wouldn't find till much later in the edit. But nowadays, I just hit the A key and it brings me right to the selection tool. Another one that unfortunately relies on the mouse. You just click anywhere in the timeline and it will select everything downstream of where your mouse is set. Then you can click and drag or use your control and arrow keys to safely nudge your entire timeline. If you want to select just one track, hold down shift and A at the same time. The double arrow will turn into a single arrow and this will select everything on that one track. And of course, anything that's linked to it, like maybe the audio track. But that's not all. You can also select everything upstream from a specific point. This time, instead of holding down shift, you just tap shift and voila, the arrow flips and it's facing the other way. And check this out. You can again, hold down shift and select just one track in the opposite direction. Pretty dang cool. Number eight, zooming the timeline. An important part of manipulating things in your timeline is being at the right scale to see it. Some clips might be only a few frames long. Others might be over an hour long. And sure, you can always drag that bizarre mountain view slider in the bottom left corner, but the faster way is simply using plus or minus. As long as you have your timeline selected, this will scale the timeline in and out in small increments. And yeah, it's minus and equals technically because you have to hold down shift on the keyboard to make it a plus, but from a logical perspective, it's definitely supposed to be plus and minus. It just makes sense. Frankly, I'm constantly adjusting my view, even during playback. And if you want to see the entire timeline from your first clip to your last, just tap backslash. Now, I, I know that's another hotkey, but they all kind of go together. 
Number nine, full screen panels. Each panel or window in the Premiere Pro UI and many other programs for that matter can be full screen, which is great if you want to tweak something and zoom in briefly without moving around all of your windows and messing up your perfect layout. That's why I use Tilde all the time. Simply hover your mouse over the desired panel that you'd like to full screen, hit the Tilde key, and it'll be full screen. Awesome. Awesome as well if you want to show someone your cut so far without all the other distracting UI stuff everywhere. Just hover over your program panel, tilde, and then play back your masterpiece. You might want to pre-render as well to make sure it runs smoothly. Number 10, paste default crossfade audio. This one's easy. Let's say you need a crossfade between audio or you want to smooth dissolve between two clips of video. Instead of digging through your FX panel and finding your crossfade, dragging it down and lining it up, you can just select the cut point, hit shift D, and it'll paste a crossfade. I think by default, Premiere's crossfade is about 20 frames long on either end, but guess what? You can change that too. If you almost always need that crossfade to be exactly five frames or 100 frames on either end, you can go into your preferences and tell it what that default should be. There's also a bunch of types of crossfades, constant gain, constant power, exponential fade, film dissolve, and you can set any of them to be your default apply video transition if you have a favorite. So. Go play around with those, go crazy. Number 11, the rolling edit tool. Hitting in on your keyboard will jump you to the rolling edit tool, essentially a selector for edges and cut points. It's good for shortcut number 10, applying those crossfades, but the rolling edit tool really shines when you click and drag in either direction. It extends one clip while collapsing the other, a great tool as you refine your cuts and give them a little breathing room on one end, tightening up the other, and not changing the total runtime in any way. Those of you newish to editing might find it hard to imagine how you'll actually use this tool, but trust me, once you get into more complex edits, you'll find a lot of uses for it. Number 12, disable and enabling clips. Sometimes you just wanna hear the dialogue track by itself or the music on its own, so oftentimes we'll solo the entire track, but what if you don't wanna hear one specific clip? Well, you could always delete it, play it back, and then undo, or you could undergo the hassle of moving the clip somewhere else in the timeline, like onto its own track, and then you can mute it. Sometimes I have a clip that doesn't seem to be working, but I don't want to get rid of it just yet. I don't want to lose this place. I might need it later. That's when I turn it a disable clip tool. Some of you might already know about this feature. You can right click on a clip, scroll down to the enabled, and then toggle it to disabled. But the fast way to do it is to hit shift control E. This affects any and all clips that are highlighted in the timeline. And because it toggles between enabled and disabled, if you use a select a mix of clips, it'll flip their statuses. All the enabled ones will become disabled and all the disabled ones will become enabled. And this is so much better than deleting a clip, turning down its volume or locking the track because the clip keeps its place. All the effects are applied in the way you intended. It's one clip to turn it on and off, and it moves when you use A to highlight and nudge everything. For all intents and purposes, it's a normal clip in your timeline. It just doesn't affect your video. Number 13, Control-Alt-V. Some of you might already know about the special menu settings. What happens if you wanna copy a dozen effect layers or the transform adjustments from one clip to another? If I copy and paste, it'll just paste the clip on top wherever the playhead is situated. Disastrous, but Right click, choose paste special, and it'll pop up this dedicated menu where you get to choose what gets moved across. Video effects, audio effects, transforms, vector graphics, essential graphics, or essential audio effects. Well, now it's even easier. Basically, you just highlight a clip, hit control C like normal, highlight your target clip or clips, hit control alt V, and wow, look at that, there's the menu. And it saves and remembers your previous settings, including if you want the effect to scale to the bounds of the new clip, and what things you want it to copy across. Super easy. All right, I would say at least 30% of my edits, I barely touch the mouse for the first hour of cutting. You can get into a wondrous flow, your fingers flying over the keyboard. You can even assign hotkeys to different actions that don't ship out of the box as shortcuts. For instance, I have every panel in my UI assigned to a number on my tin key, among other things. So go ahead, hit Control Alt K and see that vast world of potential opened up to you. And next time we'll get into my favorite advanced and obscure hotkeys. Until then, don't forget to favorite and tap that bell to make sure you never miss a crucial update in your filmmaking career.